Hey guys and welcome to another session and in this session we are talking about how to build Linux using build root. Uh, if you're trying to build an embedded Linux then this is going to be very very useful to you um, because the embedded Linux is careful about the size and what applications etc are loaded into the Linux. So to keep the size small build root is a fairly useful tool um, and uh, I will show you a very simple um, video about how to get uh, up and running with build root quickly. Um, so in this, first of all, you have to install build root and here's a link. So buildroot.org downloads manual. If you go to the manual.html there, you can see all these instructions there. It's very nicely um, documented. So you have to install the mandatory packages first. And once the mandatory packages are installed, you just download the tarball from here and then you extract it. That's all you have to do, extract it in your machine. Assuming the mandatory packages are installed, which depending on your system, you have to install the right packages. So um, next up, um, I guess we have to run make menu config and it needs the curses or n curses package. So let's do that now. So I am uh, I have extracted uh, my build root here in this uh, in this folder on my uh, laptop, and so now if I run make menu config, um, this should open up uh, the UI, and in this I have various options to uh, configure, and so what I really want to do here is install Dropbear, which is the SSH um, server so that I can SSH into the box once the Linux is up and running. And you can see that it's inside target packages networking drop pair. So you just have to go down to target packages and go down to networking. And then if you go down, you can see that I have drop pair installed here. So make sure you install drop pair because without it, you won't be able to SSH into your box. Very important, very useful. Um, and then once you have checked that, and the other thing is you have to set root login with password. So if you go to system config here, system config, you know, the root login password, check this one. And once you check this one, you can set your password, which I've set to one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and once that is done, another thing I want to make sure you, you remember is the target. Now in my case, I am building for x86 64 bit. So I have set that here. Uh, my target is set. Um, I don't think I set many other configurations. I'm going to use an external bootloader, so I'm not too worried about it. And I'm going to build my own USB flash drive, and I'll show you how to do that. So don't worry too much too much about creating ISO images and so on, because that may get into some trouble uh, in trying to build it. So I'm trying to build it in the simplest possible configuration, and so that's what that's all I checked here. Now, if you save this and exit, and then all you have to do is that if you look inside this, it created a .config file here, um, and uh, config uh, file, let's just see, it's my cell tr, and then you can see that it has created uh, config.in, if I see config, uh, dot in file uh, it has uh, let me just search for drop bear uh, drop bear is not in here maybe it's referring to some other files um, and it's installed a whole bunch of different things but I just want to see where it's coming from so it pick up my options uh, I'm not seeing them in here um, maybe uh, maybe it's a hidden file uh, dot config okay so let's do a VA dot config um, and then I'm going to look for drop pair. It's still not here, but x86 underscore 64. So you can see that x86 64 is set. 
and um, the other thing was we set our password one two three four five six yeah so this is our uh, config file it's actually called dot config and so that is here and we are ready to make so if you hit make here um, and now I have already pre-compiled this so it's not going to take that long but in your case it may take uh, maybe an hour um, or so uh, to compile this um, basic build root operating system so in my case it'll, it'll get done pretty quickly and then uh, once it's written the images let me show you if you go in output folder and images you will see that there's a root file system and a kernel image, BZ image, which is a kernel image. Right, so now we are ready. Um, and so what we have to do at this point is that we have our uh, OS ready to go. So we have to prepare a USB for installing this um, OS. So how do we do that is follow these instructions. First, you have to make two partitions. Um, and those partitions are basically uh, on the SDB, which is in the, in my case, this is my USB drive. Then you have to make a partition table, which is my MS-DOS table here. And then I create two partitions. First is a FAT32, which is starts at one MB and goes up to two gig. This is my boot partition. And then I make a second partition. You could make any number of second partitions because you can have as many copies of OS root file system on your um, uh, USB disk. Now, once I have done those um, using um, parted, um, basically these are parted commands, right? From three, four, five, and six, these are inside parted because I ran parted here. So we will do these. And then at that point, uh, you have made your partition table. The first partition is FAT32 and the second partition is ext 3 I'm not gonna run these commands, but I'll show you that I have these partitions. Once you have made the partitions, you format the partitions and make sure that the first partition, um, you know, is a FAT, FAT32 SDB1 and the second partition is ext 3 and it's partitioned correctly. So we're just going to take a quick look. If I run sudo parted-l, um, I should see that the partitions for uh, my uh, OS are here and you can see them that the first is FAT32 and the second is ext 3 and I have um, those um, set here. So um, once we have in, uh, part of the USB um, ready, then the other thing is how do we copy? So I have this um, uh, script and I can share this uh, script with you guys so you can study this. But essentially, once I know my USB disk is SDB, sometimes the USBs are like SDB, SDE and so on, depending on how many times you have plugged and unplugged it. Uh, it has some sort of memory. So in my case, I just start my script by saying that I'm at SDB. And if I'm at SDB, uh, which let's just quickly make sure by running block ID. Um, and um, uh, you should be able to see here that I have SDB. So SDB uh, is set up here. That's my USB drive. So if I now look at this, um, I will basically set up the mount points for the two disks. Uh, and then once my mount points are set up for uh, the primary and the secondary uh, or the, the I guess, root, um, the kernel partition or the boot partition and the uh, root file system partitions, then I'll just grub install. So this is important. I'm going to install grub on that disk. And um, disk one boot, I'm installing grub inside the boot folder on SDB. USB disk here is B. So as on SDB, I'll install the boot partition. Uh, I'll install grub. And then I'll copy the kernel, which is in the output images of my build root into the boot folder. And then uh, once I'm done with that, then I'm going to copy or, or untar the um, root FS onto the second partition. And so you can follow this command. So this will basically copy, extract the root, the root file system onto the second partition, and then I'll sync so that nothing is in my file cache. And then I will copy the grub config. So this is the other file I created. I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to give you this um, in the um, bit bucket. So you copy the grub config to this specific location on disk one boot grub. 
And once you're done with this, you're done pretty much. So you've copied and you have created your file system, right? So I'm going to show you what the grub.config file contains here. Um, the grub.config just has one menu entry for my OS. And that what I do is that I'll start by loading Linux from this PZ image that we had copied to the boot partition. And also it tells you that the root file system is on this second partition. So in your case, you have to um, run that block ID command and you might want to change this. So if you run block ID command, uh, you can see that your specific second partition may have some different part UID, right? So you see that this 7C5-02, is, if you see my grub config, it has the 7C5-02 part UID equals this. So it tells the the bootloader that the second partition on my USB disk is where my root file system is located. The kernel is located in the first partition. The root file system is here. And so using these, the Linux can be loaded. And so this is all that you need here. So this is all set up. I'll give you this um, copying file, which should be copied in the build root directory and it can copy into the USB. You just have to make one small change that just when you look at your LS block uh, or block ID command, you can see which uh, letter it's like SDB, SDC, SDE, whatever, wherever your USB is located, just change this. At that point, this will copy all the stuff that is needed um, and create the mount points. Just make sure your mount points are not colliding with something that's pre-existing in your system, but otherwise it should be pretty okay. And then it'll copy everything and create the grub um, grub um, config file. Once those are done, you're pretty much done. At this point, we are ready to test this uh, USB stick onto an actual system. So I'm going to um, show you the system that on which I'm about to load this stick. So what I'll do is I'll take the stick out from there and I'm going to um, plug the stick into my uh, new system or where I'm going to do the testing basically. So um, let's do that here. Let's find the, um, and then I am going to boot this system. So, um, you will now see that the system will start booting with the USB stick that we just created. And um, so there's the grub um, and I select the OS and it should start booting in a few seconds. So we'll just wait a few more seconds for the boot screen to come up. And I'll uh, probably make this display capture a little bit bigger so um, you can see this better. That um, Linux has started loading. And now we are at the uh, root screen. So um, so we are inside now. And once you're inside, we still want to SSH into this box. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that. And so one thing you want to do is look at your slash etc. Um, uh, network interfaces file and you have to add these lines which is auto f0 and iface f0 inet dhcp so that will enable the f0 interface and so if i do if up on f0 it's already configured and if i ping google uh let's see google I can spell that google.com and there you go you have this running so now we're going to make sure that we have the SSH running so probably it is service SSH uh, start okay so if it's not service SSH let's just see SSH start 
Okay. So, um, or maybe it's SSHD start. All right. So PS minus EF grep ssh uh let's see grep ssh if there's no ssh running on our system um which ssh and which sshd so there's no sshd SSH, um, so this seems like, what about if we see which, um, maybe drop bear, yeah, so drop bear is running on our system. And so um, if drop bear is running, let's try to log in from our um, other system by using SSH into uh, this. So you can see, or maybe you can't see that clearly, that drop bear is now running. Uh, and we're just going to minimize this and try to really um, SSH. So before we do the SSH, we need to get the IP address of this machine. So we're going to run one quick command to do IP space A. And we can see that its IP address is 192.168.1.113. So we're just going to go here and SSH. Um, uh, yeah, and root at 192.168.1.113. Uh, OK, so it has failed. So um, because probably the IP address has changed. Um, and I'm just going to remove um, tilde, uh, tilde slash dot SSH slash uh, known hosts and I'm going to do SSH again this time uh, uh, I'm going to uh, try to password again and there you go it has been able to log in I'm going to do that one more time uh, because um, so let's wait. Um, so I'm going to do the password here. And you can see that uh, I can see my root file system. Here I'm logged into machine, uname minus A. Um, you can see that this is our Linux machine that we just built using build root. And everything's up and running. We are good to go. Um, so pretty much from, uh, from scratch, we have been able to build the Linux and um, essentially get it up and running. Um, so that's it for this episode, guys. And if you have any questions, leave them for me. Um, I may not be able to answer all the questions because I'm also new to building Linux using build root. But it seems like, um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is that if you do um, the utilization, it seems like the whole of the file system, it's sitting only in like 10 megabytes. So uh, it's a pretty small, um, you know, we had three or four gigs of a hard disk or the partition available, we only fit the whole of Linux inside 10 megabytes. So that's a fairly small footprint for the Linux that we have generated. And that is very good for the embedded system because you use very little of the useless um, files or um, applications that you may not need. So that's it for this episode. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If not, then, you know, just leave me some questions of if there's some clarifications that you need. But um, I will see you in an another episode as I work on this series and try to see what else I can build using uh, Linux. I also have another series in mind where, you know, we can build Linux using Docker. And there's plenty of people on the internet that who are doing that. So I can 
take the inspiration from that and try to build um, complete Linux from Docker, which may be a lot easier. Now, build root is fairly small, but you can use Docker and, and use a, maybe a slightly bigger image, but the advantage of using it, uh, Docker is that you can have maybe one which has Ubuntu or something that's well known so that you can get the package manager from there and, and upgrade it fairly easily or install new packages fairly easily. It's not so easy within build root because everything that comes into build root has to be built by the process that we just saw, the make menu config and the make process. So that's how it'll happen. And, uh, and that's it for this episode, guys. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.